Hi, this is Owen Astrakhan for CompSci 201, and I'm going to have a quick discussion about the Metal eight Table APT that was going to be part of discussion this week, but discussion went a little long. So I'm going to use this APT to review some concepts about comparators and inner classes, and just as a reminder of how things work. So you'll need to read the Metal Table APT in full on your own. I'll go through an example to illustrate the main concepts involved. So we have a string parameter that's going to describe gold, silver, and bronze medals in different competitions, for example, in the Olympics. And we have to generate a result of which countries have the most medals, gold, silver, and bronze. And please be sure to read this description. I'll look at an example to illustrate what's happening. So in this example, there are three string, there are three elements in each string. Those are the three character country codes that illustrate gold, silver, and bronze. So here we see Italy with a gold, Japan with a silver, and Austria with a bronze. Korea, Taipei, Ukraine. I might have some of these three-letter country codes wrong. Korea, Korea, Great Britain. That means gold, silver, bronze. Gold, silver, bronze and we tabulate those results and we see that Korea has three gold medals and one silver. Italy has one gold medal and no other medals. Taipei has no gold, a silver, and a bronze. And we can see that, for example, if we look at China, which in these tabulated results has one silver. We'll look up here to see where does China appear, and here it is, and we can see they have one silver medal. So when we look at the, the order in which the results are returned, it says, sort the elements by the number of gold medals in decreasing order. If they're ties, break by silver. If they're ties, break by bronze. And if they're still a tie, sort by their three-letter country code in ascending alphabetical order. So we can see how that works, and we'll, that will be reflected in the code we write. Before we start looking at code, we have to come up with some ideas. Sorting is going to require the use of a comparator. And just to remind you of how that works, that was in slides from a previous class. But I'm going to open up a J shell just to review how that works. So here I have three string arrays. They're all identical, and they're all separate. So I have anteater, bookkeeper, diligent, and estuary. And as an example, if I sort let's say, the A array, and I can say comparator, which is the class in Java that allows you to compare two objects, and I'm going to say compare reverse order, and we can re remind ourselves that A looks like this. In a reverse order, that should be very straightforward just to see B and C are still separate. So I've sorted A in reverse order. Now we also saw in class that I could sort using a function. So I could say comparing comparator.comparing, and then I can give it a function over strings, and I use the syntax of the name of the class, and then a double colon, and then length. So now I'm sorting by comparing string lengths. And now if I see A again, we'll see estuary, diligent, anteater, bookkeeper. And as a reminder, diligent has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters. Anteater has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters. Why does diligent appear before anteater? And the answer is because before I sorted them, diligent appeared before anteater. And because the sorts are stable, they reflect the order of equal elements. So because diligent comes before anteater here, when I sort by lengths, the tie is broken by the order in which they appear in the original. To make that clearer, when I sort B by lengths, so note that B, anteater, appears before diligent because they're in alphabetical order. When I sort B, 
I get anteater before diligent because anteater, sorry, before diligent because they come in that order. They both have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters. But anteater comes before diligent since it came before it in this array. Whereas diligent came before anteater because it came before it in that original array. So I'm going to keep the idea of stable sorting in mind as I try to solve this APT. With that in mind, how do I keep track of the number of gold, the number of silver, and the number of bronze for each country? As I'm going through here, I'm going to use this country, that's gold, this country, that's silver, this country, that's bronze. It might occur to you to think of a map where the country code is the key in a map, and the value is the number of gold, silver, and bronze. And there are many ways to represent that. We could keep an array of three elements where the first element was gold, second element is silver, third element is bronze. That will totally work, and you can use that to get to an all green solution. I, however, am going to use a nested class, the same way that, for example, in P3DNA, there, the, in the link strand class, a list node was an inner class, a nested class, and it was used throughout the code. I'm going to create an inner or nested class just for the purpose of associating with each country the number of gold, silver, and bronze elements. So I'm going to look at my VS code where I've already got some of this written mostly to illustrate the concept. And the key here, I hope for you, is that you could recreate this rather than simply copying it. This, this inner class metal country is relatively straightforward. It has four instance variables, the name of the country, the number of gold, the number of silver, and the number of bronze. In my constructor, I simply provide the name of the country. As a reminder, instance variables are automatically initialized to zero or to null if they're pointers in a constructor if no other assignment is made to them. I'm providing these helper methods not because they're particularly useful since I can access the gold, silver, and bronze, but because they're methods, I can use them as an argument to the comparator.comparing method the same way I used string double colon get length. So, I have getter methods, get gold, get silver, get bronze, get name, and they simply return the values associated with them. But I'm going to be able to use these methods when I sort. When I look back at the APT, I see that I'm going to need to return strings for each country in a stylized way. The name of the country, a space, the number of gold, a space, the number of silver, a space, the number of bronze. And so, in my toString method, I'm going to create that. I'm using string.format with a string, an integer, a decimal integer, a decimal integer, a decimal integer. So I'm simply going to return a string in the proper format. Now, I'm hoping, I'm hopeful, I encourage you to think, how do you parse this data and know it's gold, silver, bronze. So I'm going to run over each string in my input array and parse it into gold, silver, and bronze for a particular country. I hope that you're thinking, okay, the string has three elements. They're separated by a space. I will get at each one of them by calling dot split. So for each element in my parameter, I'm going to call dot split, and I'm going to use that country code and in order, it will be gold, silver, and bronze. Now, recall that this is the key in a map, and the value associated with that key is going to be one metal country object. And that metal country object will be the value, and it will have in it for each country the number of gold, the number of silvers, and the number of bronzes. So when we look at the code, you're going to see that I've created my map of country codes to metal country objects. 
I'm going to now run through this and I'll just put as a reminder here in a comment. This one string looks like something like Korea, Italy, and United States. So I'm going to be separating that with dot split. Now I'm going to loop over each element of Korea, Italy, USA. That's now an array. And what I'm going to say is, if I've never seen this country code before, I'm going to associate it in the map with a new metal country object. I cr constructed the metal country object from the string. We can come up here and see, as a reminder, that's the constructor. You might think for a second, this class is private. That means it's only accessible inside the metal table class. I'm using it as a convenience, an inner or nested class. This constructor isn't set as public because its visibility isn't set as either private, public, or protected. It's accessible anywhere within this class. Public is redundant in all of these. I could have left that, those out. I can't leave it out here because it's an override. And in an override method, it must be exactly the same signature as the method that's being overridden. So now, once I've done that, I'm going to come in here and say, all right, I know that there's a metal country object associated with the string. That's the country code, Korea. So I get that object. And remember, when I get it, it's already in the map. If it hadn't been in the map before, that put the new one in there. Otherwise, the country code had been seen previously in parsing these input strings. And now I simply obtain that metal country object. That's what map.get does. It retrieves the value in the map. And remember, everything in Java is a pointer. So that value is pointing to something in the map. I increment the number of gold for Korea. I in increment the number of silver for Italy, and I increment the number of bronze for USA. And I'm so this part of the code consists of parsing all the data. Now I need to sort it. And I'm going to create an array of all the values in the map. Remember, a map consists of keys and values. Map.values is a collection. It's a list, actually, of all the things in the map that are values of some key. So I've created an array of all of them. That will be, as you can see here, metal country objects. And now I need to sort them. And I need to sort them by first gold, then silver, then bronze, and all those in reverse order. So heavier, the country with the most golds will come first. And if there's a tie, we break the tie by silver. And if there's a tie, etc. Now, it's possible to do this with one comparator. But the comparator dot comparing dot then comparing, which we saw in class, is complicated to get right. Now, you probably could ask a large language model to help with that syntax. I prefer to use the large language models for hints on something. And my idea here is, if I'm going to sort these, I'm going to use the stability of arrays.sort to break the ties appropriately. So I know that I'm going to first sort alphabetically because ultimately, if things are in alphabetical order, and then I'll sort by, let's say, the number of gold medals, that means if the gold medals are tied, it will respect the existing order that they're in alphabetical order. So let me make that a little clearer. First, I'm going to make some comparator objects. I'm making these explicit so that we can see the syntax of what's going on. And this mirrors what I did in my J shell. I said comparator.comparing, and then I provided a method named length in the class string. So now in my code, I'm saying comparator.comparing, and then there's a method, get gold, in the class metal country. That's why I provided the method, because the syntax of comparing requires a method that's called when objects are compared. 
rather than something else. So I set these all up. I have gold comparison, silver, bronze, and name. Now I sort first by name. That's alphabetical order. Then I sort that in reverse bronze. So now I have everything is sorted by the number of bronze metals with higher bronze first because I reversed it. Ties are broken in by alphabetically since they're already in alphabetical order here. Then silver, then gold. I do that because the last thing I do will be in gold metal order and then those ties are broken by silver, those ties are broken by bronze, those ties are broken alphabetically. Finally, I put them all in an array to return. You can figure that out and see if it's all green, but this code is the basis of an all green solution. Enjoy.